respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the generation of the companions, radiallahu anhu, was the best ever. The companions are the best of humanity after prophets and messengers. Because they possessed qualities which none ever possessed, and none will ever possess it until the Day of Judgment. They were indeed a unique generation amongst all generations, before them and after them. They held an honorable status with Allah Azza wa Jal, which they were deserving of. Because they truly and sincerely and practically believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. And they obeyed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah, in all situations and in all aspects of life. Additionally, they defended Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Islam until the last minute and the last breath in their lives. Moreover, their sacrifice for the sake of this religion was something that's not matchable. And the books of history testifies to this. They gave up their homelands. They gave up their families and relatives and tribes. They gave up their wealth. They sacrificed their souls for the sake of this religion. One of the examples, one of the brightest examples of these companions is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. With regards to sacrificing wealth for the sake of this deen. In the book of Imam Ahmad, and it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in his death sickness, Allah Azza wa Jal did not benefit me with anyone's wealth as he benefited me from the wealth of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And this benefit was not a personal benefit for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was a benefit for the sake of this religion. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was known to buy all those who were slaves and embraced Islam to free them from slavery and set them free from torture. He spent and spent and spent until Allah Azza wa Jal, or to the extent that Allah Azza wa Jal said about him, after he mentioned hellfire, he said, He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the righteous one, the pious one, will be kept far away from it, referring to hell. Why? He who spends his wealth purifying his soul. The more you spend for the sake of the religion, the more you purify your heart and your soul. Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy on him, said it was conveyed that the consensus of the scholars of, this, of tafsir said that these verses were revealed about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. As for giving up their homelands, 
The stories are more than to be listed in a khutbah. But let me give you one of the most moving and touching stories. It is about Damrah ibn Jundub. Damrah was one of the old, old people who embraced Islam in Mecca. And Allah Azza wa Jal made migration from Mecca to Medina an obligation in a certain period, or at a given time it became mandatory. And He exempted three types of people women, children, and old people. So he was one of the exempted ones in addition to him being a very ill man. But this man was living amongst the kuffar, seeing disbelief surrounding him and thinking how those who migrated with or before the Prophet who are now in the presence of the Prophet and his company we're enjoying seeing him daily, praying behind him, learning from him. So he couldn't tolerate his situation any longer. And he became adamant to migrate to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. So he prepared his camel and he started his journey more than 450 kilometers between Mecca and Medina. Such a long, tiring, exhausting, stressful journey, especially for a person with the description we said. Old, very old, and very ill. And a short way in the journey, he started feeling that his life is ending. He felt he is going to die. So he clapped one hand with the other and raised his head and said, Allahumma hadihi bay'ati lak. Oh Allah, this is my pledge to you. Then he clapped his hand again and he said, Allahumma hadihi bay'ati li rasulik. Oh, Oh Allah, this is my pledge to your messenger. And he died. So Allah sent down وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكْهُ الْمَوْتُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Whoever leaves his house, migrating to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then death overtakes him, then his reward becomes incumbent upon Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal did not say he will get Jannah. Or he will get this or that. Allah Azza wa Jal said it is upon Allah. And the scholars said, when the amount of reward is not disclosed, it reflects abundance of reward. Such examples, brothers and sisters, are given so we know the status and the rank of these people, of this unique generation the like of which will never exist until the Day of Judgment. And so that we will know that whoever attacks them is in reality attacking Islam in totality because it was through them that Islam reached us and will continue to reach the generations after us until the Day of Judgment. They heard Islam pure from its source, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and conveyed it fully, precisely, accurately, 
with sincerity and honesty and truthfulness. So whoever attacks them, whoever slanders them, is attacking Islam in an indirect way. These people have rights upon us. The first right is to love such a generation. You know, when someone does you a favor, you become grateful all your life, depending on what type of favor he does or did to you. Well, these people conveyed what can lead to our salvation. So what should be the level of our love to these people? The Prophet wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, a sign of belief is to love the Ansar. And for all the more reason to love the Muhajireen, because according to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Muhajireen in general are a higher rank than the Ansar in general. Undoubtedly, there are individuals amongst the, the Ansar who are much better than others amongst the Muhajireen, but the scholar said, in general, the Muhajireen are better than the Ansar. As a matter of fact, the companions themselves used to consider one of their best deeds through which they come closer to Allah is to love the distinct companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Anas ibn Malik, who is from the tribe of Khazraj, from the people of Medina, said a man, and this is also reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Mata sa'a, when is the hour? When is it coming? When is it going to take place? The Prophet ﷺ did not answer his question, but rather asked him, what have you prepared? How have you prepared for it? What have you sent forth? He said, not a lot of deeds, except that I love Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, glad tidings to you, the person will be in the company of those whom he loves on the day of judgment. And I said, we were never delighted and more joyful than that day. For the statement of the Prophet ﷺ that a person will be joined with those whom he loves in this dunya and the hereafter. Because by Allah, I love Abu Bakr and Umar. And based on this, I hope to be with them on the day of judgment, though my deeds are not like their deeds. Another right these people have upon us is to believe that they are the best of all humans after prophets and messengers. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, he said, خَيْرٌ nasi qarni." The best of all people are my generation. What a testimony from the best of all creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his companions that they are the best of all people. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were the best of the ummah. They possessed the purest heart they were the deepest in knowledge. And Allah chose them, selected them for the company of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So be mindful of their rank and follow into their footsteps because they were upon guidance. Radiallahu We also believe 
as Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That the companions, though, are all good, all trustworthy, all pious, yet they vary in rank within the sector of com being companions of Muhammad We firmly believe that the best of all the companions are the ten who were given glad tidings by Muhammad to be admitted into Jannah. And the best amongst them are the four khulafa, the four caliphs. In the order they held the post, Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, and then Ali. And we also said, as I mentioned previously, that in general the Mujahajireen are better than the Ansar. We believe that the people who fought in the, with the Prophet ﷺ during the battle of Badr are better than the rest of the companions. And with regards to female companions, Ibn Taymiyyah said, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that the best of the female companions are Khadija, Aisha, and Fatima. Radi Allahu anhunna ajma'i. We ask Allah Azza wa to fill our hearts with love to the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru allaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu wa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa khatam al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in thumma amma ba'd. Praising the companions radhi allahu anhum is one of their rights. Imam Ibn Abi Zamanayn said, part of the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is to love the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and spread their merits and their praiseworthy qualities amongst people. Another right is to firmly believe that they are of the people of Jannah in general. And for those who were singled out and named by the Prophet wasallam, that they are particularly will be of the people of Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal says about the companions, radiallahu anhum wa radu anha. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. And He has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow. This is general regarding the companions. Another right is that we supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal for their forgiveness. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ And those who come after them or came after them, meaning the companions, say, O oh Allah, forgive our sins and the sins of our brothers who preceded us in faith. Another right is to refrain from disparaging any of them. Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahli Sunnah said, anyone who disparages, hates, or thinks evil of any of the companions is a religious innovator, mubtadi'un. until he supplicates to all the companions. Because some people have a problem with Muawiyah, for example, radiallahu anhu. One of the scholars once was asked, who's better, Muawiyah or Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? He said, tabba lak, woe to you. How can you ever com compare a companion to anyone else? But some people have a problem with Muawiyah. Radiallahu anhu. 
Another right is to hate those who hate any of the companions. The Prophet ﷺ said, one of the strongest bound, bonds of belief is to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. And those who are de deserving the most to be hated for the sake of Allah are those who hate the companions or any of them. Radiallahu anhum ajma'in. To follow into their guidance and footsteps. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي Follow my way and the way of the rightly guided caliphs who will come after me. This is a direct command from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow the guidance of the companions radiallahu anhu particularly the four, the four caliphs who came after him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all know that dispute took place amongst the companions and battles took place. The belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is to refrain about, from talking about these events. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al Tabarani, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, "Ida dukira ashabi faamsiku." When my companions is be, are being spoken about, then refrain. If you hear anyone speaking ill about any of my companions, refrain. Don't partake into this. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah have mercy on him, said. Allah Azza wa Jal saved us and purified our hands from indulging in their blood. Meaning we, did, we were not part of the battles during which blood was shed. So let us purify our tongues by refraining from talking about these events. And I conclude with a very important matter which is believing that it is absolutely prohibited to badmouth any of the companions because number one it is belying Allah Azza wa Jal who praised them and not only praised them but promised them Jannah Number two, it is belying Muhammad وسلم, who described them to be the best of all nations or of all generations. Number three, it is disobedience to Muhammad وسلم, when he said, as reported by Al Bukhari, لا تسبوا أصحابي. Don't badmouth my companions. Rather, he وسلم, cursed. Supplicated with la'na against those who badmouth the companions. He said, Whoever badmouths my companions will have the curse of Allah and his angels and all humanity. And when this bad mouthing reaches the level of describing them as disbelievers, then this in itself is an act of apostasy. Imam Ahmad radiallahu anhu was asked about a man who claims that Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha were disbelievers. What is the ruling pertaining such a person? He said he is not from the Ummah of Islam. You know, when I accuse Abu Bakr of becoming 
or committing apostasy after the Prophet's time, then I am either saying the Qur'an is not correct, and that's disbelief in itself, or I am saying it's, it's correct, but everything or a lot of it is wrong. As if Allah Azza wa Jal didn't know that this is going to happen, so he praised him and Umar and other companions, but then they, Allah Azza wa Jal later discovered that this was wrong. Ta'ala Allahu anha. Ta'ala Allahu anha. So we have to be mindful of the danger of such behavior and be careful of those whom we might hear or see or watch. When you see or hear someone doing this, then know that this person is very dangerous to be heard or spoken to. We ask Allah Azza wa to purify our tongues from talking anything ill about any of the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we make Allah Azza wa our witness that we love all the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, and from the women, especially Aisha and Hafsa. These names that enrage some people. اللهم ارضى عن صحابة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارضى عنهم أجمعين واجمعنا بهم في عليين اللهم اجمعنا بهم مع نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم في فردوسك الأعلى